Hi, my name is John Clarkson. I'm a technical writer with the Link Product Group, and in this video, I'll show you how you can use C Sharp code in the Link 2010 SDK to sign into Link when the Link UI is suppressed. UI suppression is a feature that allows developers to create applications that provide Link functionality without exposing any of the Link user interface. For example, a big box retailer can use UI suppression in Link to create a kiosk that runs a store directory. When customers walk in the front door, they can use one or more kiosks running the Link UI suppressed application to query store inventory and use instant messaging to ask product questions of staff in the store or staff in some central location that fields these questions regionally or nationwide. So say you're a store customer looking for a bike lamp. You walk in, use the kiosk to check store, store inventory and you find out where the bike lamps are located in the store and you discover that what's in stock is some new model you know nothing about. So you launch an IM application on the kiosk and ask what's up with these new bike lamps? Do they work with the same batteries as the previous models? And of course you get an answer immediately. The advantage to the store is they get access to all of Link's functionality and they can completely hide Link's user interface which allows them to make the application just as simple and elegant as they want, but they can also prevent access to any features like, for instance, the operating system or the off button that they want to lock away from prying fingers and curious eyes. So if the link UI is suppressed, how do you sign in? I built an application using code presented in two walkthrough topics I'll show you here. In the MSDN library, um, open servers and enterprise development, go down to link, Link 2010 and the Link 2010 SDK documentation. Open up the there we go. API concepts, uh, Link model API concepts, and if you go down here, there's two walkthrough topics. Sign into Link with UI suppressed, which you see here. John Austin's one of our writers. He created this topic. It's got object model art in it instructions and code samples and then the second topic we're also go, excuse me also going to discuss how to sign out of link with UI suppressed and this other topic also John Austin code samples so here's the sample application and we're going to start off by uh, going into registry editor and setting UI suppression on the value is 1 and then we're going to close link and restart link. So when link comes up again, it's going to come up with uh, UI suppressed. There we go. And you'll see it shows up there in Task Manager. So it started. Now we're going to sign in. So I'll enter my password and click sign in. And see the communicator XE is there. We get some messages. Link's beginning to sign in. Uh, sign in is completed. And you see Communicator XE there in Task Manager. We're going to send a message. And we go take a look at the computer we sent the message to. You see there's the message. We'll close it. And we'll get a status message back. Conversation state changed. Now inactive. Conversation is terminated. So now we'll sign out. Use the begin sign out method and there's the callback method and we'll then shut down and see there's the callback method and communicator XE is out of the task manager so let's take a look at the code uh, first of all I added a reference to link.model and to system.config and you can see here there's some using statements that relate to that and you can see that the rest of the code is broken up into classes. Form class is pretty much just click events that I use to launch the other classes. And we'll start with the sign in class. At the top of the sign in class I declare a uh, client object and I set a boolean flag that I'll use to indicate the client is initialized or not and by the way uninitialized 
simply means that client.initialize is not called yet. And the whole issue of uninitialized or not is really only an issue when you're dealing with UI suppression. Because in normal mode, initializing is handled automatically by the link UI. So we'll go on and take a look at the constructor for the sign-in class. I uh, get the password as a parameter from the form. And then I use get client to get an instance of the link client. And immediately we have that a register for three event handlers, sign-in delayed, state changed, and credential requested. And I also check to see what the state of the client is. If it's null, I throw an exception. And I read the in suppressed mode property to get the UI suppression state of the client. And I check to see if the client is uninitialized and call begin initialize if it is not. And there's two parameters you can see here. There's a callback method and the object state, which we set just a little bit earlier in this in the constructor. And then after the constructor, I have three event handlers, and there are two callback methods. First, the event handlers. In credential requested, I use the submit method to get the user domain and user name, user domain and user name from the app.config file. And of course, I've already collected the password uh, as a parameter to the constructor. It comes in from the form object. And in sign in delayed, I just uh, show a message box. And then in state changed, I check to see if the client is signed out. If it is, I call the begin sign in method, which you see here. And uh, you can see I'm collecting the credential information, which is the user URI, domain and username, and the password. And I get the user URI, the username, and the domain from the app.config file. Again, the password is passed in. It's a user entry on the form, passed into the class as a parameter on the constructor. And it's important, I want to note, that you provide credentials, because it's possible to pass in nulls with this method and just let the system provide credentials. But if multiple users have logged in recently on this computer, you can't be sure whose credentials are used, which is not a good idea, right? So now the callback methods. In sign-in callback, we verify that begin sign-in is complete. If it is, we unblock the calling thread. In initialize callback, we're verifying that begin initialize is complete. And if so, end the initialize operation and once again unblock execution on the calling thread. So next we'll take a look at the shutdown class. And before we get started on that, um, I want to say that it's important to sign out and shut down the link client so that when it's used in future, its object state is cleaned up. And also point out a wrinkle here uh, in case two different applications are using the same link client. For example, say in our store example, there's a customer application that uses IM, which we talked about. And say that there's also a security application that uses video. And both are running at the same time using the same client. Of course, one of the two applications is the one that initialized link. And that's the one that must sign out and shut down link. So in our store example, the security guys enter the store in the morning and use their video application to do a store sweep or something. Then later, the customer application is launched. The video application is the one that must sign out and shut down. So how do you keep track of which application is the one that initialized the client? Use a Boolean flag that defaults to false. If the application performs initialization, set the flag to true. And only if the flag is true at the time this application shuts down, then the application should also sign out from the client and shut the client down. Let's look at the sign out class. In this class, we call the begin sign out method, which has two parameters. There's a callback method and the client object. And the callback method calls the end sign out method. And then the shutdown class, we call the begin shutdown method. Again, two parameters, a callback object and or callback method in the null object, and the callback method calls the end shutdown method. So we still have the send message class to talk about. Uh, I'm going to save discussion of the code there for a separate demonstration. But the code from this demonstration, which includes that, uh, will be included in the sample that will be posted soon at the MSDN samples gallery. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll just open up my web browser and type code dot 
at the front of that URL and take off the back end so that it reads code.msdn.microsoft.com and you see it'll open up the MSDN samples gallery. I'll type in link as a search term and it'll display all the various link code samples that are up on the samples gallery. So be sure to take a look at that. And just to finish, I want to say that UI suppression is an important link feature that allows developers to create applications like the directory kiosk I described at the beginning of the demonstration. You can suppress the link UI in one hand and replace it on the other hand with your own user interface. However, UI suppression requires some different management techniques. For example, the ability to sign in while in UI suppressed mode, which we demonstrated here. For more details, take a look at John Austin's two walkthrough topics, which we showed at the beginning of the demonstration, and look for the sample code, which I hope will be posted soon at the MSTN Developer Samples website. Thank you and goodbye.